morning guys if you're wondering why I'm wearing my buff as a headgear it's because the temperature outside is reading zero degrees so it's day two in the Kalahari this is a full day a more full day in the park and I'm gonna drive out towards Nosub, so on the Nosub uh, river and um, see what there is to be seen. I think I'll get up to the, I think it's pronounced Kai Kai uh, water point or picnic spot. Get out for a little bit and then decide whether I want to keep going further up or come back to camp and then uh, go out in the afternoon again. So with um, the Tuirufirin camp, you have to go to reception, fetch your permit, which is valid uh, for your stay in the park, but um, every evening you hand your permit back in so you go in to the reception first pick up your permit and basically that's how they know um, you know you are out and about in the park and then um, on your return in the evening you go back and hand it in again so they know you're safely back from wherever you went so that's their safety system Okay, so picked up my permit, which means I can enter the park now. And the temperatures dropped to minus one. The forecast said six degrees. So the forecast was way off. Um, so it makes it quite fresh. I was actually in my flip flops and uh, when I stepped out I was like ah no there's no way because um, my toes would freeze the whole way and I'd be uncomfortable so I've put on shoes but I'm still in my shorts so hopefully it doesn't get too cold in the cabin here so when I initially booked, um, I couldn't get, you know, something that was all in the row. Um, so my booking initially was um, a night in a chalet at Tuirifirin, then camping one night, one night in Matamata, one night in Khalakhadi Lodge, and then one more night in Tuirifirin and then out. Um, and I realized that uh, I think it would have been a lot of movement to start with and with temperatures you know dipping to minus three well now it's really minus three um, camping would have just been uncomfortable so last night uh, when I came in I actually asked at reception you know if they had any availability to uh, you know change me into a chalet for the whole time I think that was a land of falcon that just flew past and uh, what they did is they swapped out my unit to one that was available for two days at Tuira Field so I won't be moving around as much the owls are just here and then um, I moved to Matamata and uh, Kalahari Lodge. Um, and then on my way back, I still have to camp. But later in the week, it seems like, you know, the temperatures should be up. So hopefully it doesn't drop to, you know, these temperatures we're seeing now. I think there's just a massive pocket of cold air that's sitting 
over the central South Africa. So hopefully it's uh, done by Saturday evening and, and camping will be possible. The cost difference between camping and uh, chalets is quite uh, significant, right? So if I camped, I think it would be about 400 Rand for camping. And the chalet is, is 1,600 Rand uh, night. And that usually sleeps too. Um, so for one person, it is a bit expensive. If you were, you know, two people sharing the accommodation, then it works out to 820 rand per night or something like that, which is not bad at all. So I need to either find a second person or camp. Okay guys, first lion sighting of the trip, you can see three females I think on the ridge and there's another one a little further down. A bit far but we'll take it maybe they'll come down just now as well so we're gonna sit on them for a little while Okay guys, so we got to the Kai Kai um, watering hole and I was just watching as two, I think land of falcons or it could be red-throated falcons. I was just checking. Um, they've been dive bombing the water hole every time the little sparrows and other small birds come down to drink. These two falcons just swoop on them. Uh, it's one of the things that is great to watch at these water holes. They're not really successful every time, but I guess eventually it does pay off because they keep doing it. So those two falcons have now set up perch on top of the sea behind the water hole and uh, none of the birds are coming down to drink it. But I'll stay here for a little while longer. It took um, just over two hours to get here. So it's a two hour drive back.
Hey guys, so managed to get onto the uh, Sunset Drive, which will be from half past five to half past eight, I think. Hopefully we get to see, you know, some of the nocturnal animals that are out and about in the park. So, uh, gonna be out for the next three hours or so. Still hot now, but they say it may get chilly towards, uh, you know, eight o'clock as the evening progresses. So, jacket and blanket in the back. So yeah, let's see what we can see. Again, it's the Olive River Bay. We'll connect now to the old road that used to lead to Mata Mata. We're going to join there where we turn there by the water in a few minutes' time. <laughs> 